So let's look at the PI planning outputs in a little bit more detail. We mentioned that there will be smart team and PI objectives. There's a program board showing the dependencies between events and the teams that have to work together to deliver those. There's a confidence vote at the end to demonstrate commitment to the objectives. If you recall, we said those who do the work plan the work. And it's not up to the business to commit the team. The team makes a commitment that they will reach the objectives that they've developed. So let's take a look at this. Let's first take a look at the so-called team and PI objectives. Looking at the big picture here, you can see down here there are the PI objectives. So these are the team PI objectives. During PI planning, as the team is pulling in features and user stories and trying to see if there's a viable plan that meets with the product owner and business owner's approval, they are going to generalize that plan into PI objectives. Right? The team is actually not committing to a specific set of user stories and a specific set of features. They're committing to the objectives that they create out of those features and user stories because well, let's face it, the PI is actually a rather long period of time. It's two months versus what a typical sprint is of two weeks. A lot can happen over two months. There can be new ideas, uh, we, we can get sideswiped, there can be issues. So we're committing to the objective. The team at least is building a plan that says, from this plan, here are the objectives we want to reach, and we have a plan that shows us that we can reach that. So each team develops a set of PI objectives for the, what they want to achieve or be able to demonstrate that they have achieved by the end of the PI. Those objectives are actually rolled up into a program objective. So the, the program PI objectives represent the collection of all the team PI objectives. So the objectives are actually created, or in, you might say in, by induction, created upwards from the plans that the teams are able to construct. So those are the objectives. The objectives are also what are considered smart. So they're not a pie in the sky, they're very specific. Typically they will be that they, we will implement this feature or we will, hit the, we will make this release. They are measurable. In other words, we know how long they're going to take and we know the business value they're going to achieve. They're achievable. We're not, we're looking at this from the point of view, we are not setting ourselves up for failure. They are relevant to the business and they are time-based. We know how long they're going to take. So this chart here shows what our objectives for a PI might look like. So this could be from a team or this could be the overall program objectives. But you can see here, it's divided, first of all, into two sections. We have uh, the objectives we're committing to. For example, here, demonstrate non-login home screen, navigate from home screen to query screen. So these are the things we're saying we will be able to do this. These are probably represented by a feature someplace or maybe a couple of features that contribute to these. But these are objectives as a team we're making for the PI. We also have a stretch objective. You know, if everything goes well, the dust falls through the air in the right way, people don't get sick, we don't run into nasty technical issues, we are also going to try to integrate with the AI system. So this could, we set a strategy objective. This is kind of like our commitment. We are very, we are certain we can do this. We will, it's pretty safe, we can do this. And if everything goes right, we may even be able to do this. Now, the other part that's quite important, and this is for the business owner and product owners to understand, is the business value associated with reaching these objectives. So in the Scaled Agile framework, objectives are given a business value of 1 to 10. What is the value, the relative value of this objective to the organization? And this is, you know, it's challenging to always put a value on something. But we're asking the product owners and business owners to say, this is what the value of this objective is and reaching it. We want to understand how much value each PI is delivering and what objectives carry that value. So this is one of the things that you should be prepared. If you're a business owner or a product owner, this is something you should be prepared to be able to assess. What is the business value 
of these objectives that we're developing. The next is the program board. And what the program board shows is effectively the teams and the dependencies between those teams to deliver on milestones and event. So on the basically the y-axis we have the teams and then for each of the sprints within the PI we have the milestone events that we would be reaching. So these could be when we expect to complete a feature or when we're going to make a release, any, uh, any number of events here. And then down here for each team are all the user stories uh, that we are working on that will contribute to the delivery of that feature or capability. What these pieces of string here show is the dependencies between the different teams. So for example, what this is showing is potentially this team down here to deliver this user story has a dependency on this team. And when you start seeing something like this, this sort of rat's nest or cat's cradle of strings, you may want to take a closer look at your program board because it's deep, it's kind of showing there's a lot of dependencies between the teams. And these are one of the things you want to, by making this visible, by making the dependencies between the teams visible in the program board, perhaps we can look at ways of reorganizing the work to mitigate these dependencies. Because this is a thing that slows us down. When we have a large number of teams dependent on other teams to deliver features, then there's a significant coordination overhead for the teams to work together. Seeing something like this may help us understand that is there another way that we can structure the work to avoid a large number of dependencies and the inherent coordination delays that may crop up? Finally, the last output is the confidence vote, the so-called fist of five. And this is where we pull the room. We each, every team presents their plan and then we ask the, all the teams collectively, what is your confidence in this plan that we can reach the objectives that you have created from your planning? And the classic fist of five is, five is, wow, this is great, we can do it. One is, this is going to be a disaster. Three is, I will live with any decision that the team makes. Four, it, this is really good. And two, I have serious, serious reservations about this. So it's a way of pulling the room it simply gives you finer degree of control than simply thumbs up or thumbs down. It's giving you sort of a finer gradient of the confidence that the team members have. And sometimes what I like to do when I ask for this confidence vote, I just simply ask, you know, first of all, what's your confidence? And most people put up five or four. And then I ask for the twos and ones to see if, you know, in the crowd, we missed people. Because you want to look at the twos and ones if there are any to look at what are the reservations you have about achieving this plan, because this is really important. If somebody has a reservation, you want to know about it now, rather than two months from now. Just to share a story with you, I was once doing a very large PI planning session where we got to the fist of five, and there was a lot of enthusiasm, and people were putting up fives and, you know, fives and fours, and then somebody put up a two and they brought up a really good issue. And it turned out it almost threw our whole plan off. We had just had a painful two days of planning and now we had a major planning issue. And as a coach, I had thought I'd done a very, very poor job, but what it turned out, as the director of engineering was saying, this is a really good thing. At least we're angry at each other now rather than two months from now. And that's what we want. We want to understand the issues up front. Where are the problems up front rather than to have them creep up on us. This is the whole point of getting everyone together and having the planning. Rather than having things happen to us, we can work intentionally and build the plan intentionally and resolve the foreseen uh, coordination issues and dependencies and risks together.